wrong way. <laughs> Hi, I'm Karen Harris, and I'm here doing a Facebook Live on Reiki for Impasse. So we are here at Reiki Circle at Unity Church of Overland Park, and want to share about, first of all, how many of you know what an empath is? Okay, I know Sarah does. All right, so an empath is somebody that is a highly sensitive person. Highly sensitive people may have difficulty going out to Walmart, to stores, uh, to crowded places because they feel overwhelmed with all the feelings of everyone. They tend to pick up other people's thoughts and worries and even other people's pains. And then it's hard to release those and sometimes they even begin to think that it's their own energy and so it becomes a problem and they may avoid going to public places. So does that apply to any of you all? Okay, all right, maybe there's a few. Okay, well, let me continue on. Um, there are gifts and challenges of being an empath. One of the gifts is your extra understanding of your friends. You know, you really know how they're feeling because guess what? You feel it too. Um, now, that's also the downside because you're feeling it, uh, then it may be, you know, a painful to you. All right, so I know I'm a counselor and when I am counseling people and they have worries and upset, then I am oftentimes kind of feeling what is going on with them. So that helps me to be understanding, but I know it's not mine because I've practiced with it. People that aren't as familiar with it may not know and it may be more of an issue. So I've got a cool quote here from David Jones. It's both a blessing and a curse to feel everything so deeply. So I have um, an article coming out in the Reiki News. I overachieved, so it's going to be a two-part article. It'll be coming out in the spring Reiki News and then probably the sequel in the summer Reiki News that has the information that I'm talking about and sharing. So some of the challenges. Um, you might find yourself avoiding watching violent TVs and movies because it's just too difficult um, and painful. Um, you might be sensitive to loud noises and startle easily. I don't know about you all, but yeah, like, yikes! Yeah, people say that when they take me to an action movie, I'm their, you know, additional entertainment, squealing. <laughs> like, oh God, sorry. Um, dislike conflict, bothered by bright lights. Um, they also tend to be ungrounded. Okay, so grounding is connecting to the earth. We just did that exercise, and grounding is one of the main things that empaths really need. Um, some gifts. You may be deeply moved by the arts and music and feel taken into bliss even, you know, with these experiences. I know I have, you know, you want to put others first. You're really compassionate and you want to help other people. Um, you're more in touch with your emotions and your inner guide. Um, some things that are really important for empaths are to do a lot of self-care. And I certainly do. You know, one of the best ways for impasse is to spend time in nature. Um, you need to be more careful of what you eat and drink because you can feel the vibration. So some people that are impasse, if you eat animals, you may take on those vibrations and that may or may not resonate with you. So you have to be very careful about um, what you eat and you may benefit from a more plant-based diet. Um, meditation and yoga are helpful and Reiki is a kind of meditation. So on to Reiki. Reiki has so many tools to help them pass. Now as I've been teaching I find that somewhere between a third to two-thirds of all my Reiki students identify as an empath to some degree or another. So um, Reiki attracts a lot of empaths who are actively looking for tools to help them. Um, one of my things that I like with the Reiki energy is to draw the Reiki power symbol. You learn that in Reiki 2. 
and you just simply draw it in front of you, pull it in, and then draw a small one on each chakra all the way up. And then there's a little saying that I like to say, which is, I strengthen my light with Reiki. Anything less than love and light will transform or leave. Now, if you like these ideas, um, you can email me for a handout at karen at karenharrison.net. And uh, I would be glad to share that with you. Another tool is to think of shields up. And you draw the power symbol in front of you and behind you. Okay. Another one, when you go on to um, advanced Reiki training, you learn a Reiki moving meditation that is very grounding. But in the meantime, the grounding meditation that I taught you all earlier is very useful. And that is simply in, uh, breathing earth energy up on an inhale and then exhaling heaven energy down. Inhale earth up. Exhale heaven down. Inhale earth up. Exhale heaven down. And inhale earth up to the belly and hold it there. So grounding is very important. Sometimes empaths may need to do it several times a day. Um, you know, some other good ways to ground are to walk outside barefoot, you know, go hug a tree, uh, dig your toes into some sand, garden, eat root vegetables, um, or dark chocolate, if you like dark chocolate. Yeah, okay, <laughs> right, who doesn't like dark chocolate? Okay. Oh, another one is to imagine a net of the power symbol um, going up. Well, you imagine all these power symbols connected to each other, and it's like a potato sack. So you imagine it coming up like this and then going down like that, all right, so that your body is totally encased in that. Um, if you go on to the Holy Fire Reiki Master, that is some of the most amazing energy. That is what really has helped me the most. Because with the Holy Fire Reiki Master, it puts this soft white cloud of mist all around you that is constantly transforming. You think of fire, fire is a transmuting energy. So it is constantly burning up and clearing things out of my energy field. And that helps me the most. Um, usually that is all that I need to do and I don't have to do my other techniques with the Holy Fire. Now if my some of these techniques are not enough, um, another cool technique is to shield the other person. Alright, how do I do that? I imagine drawing um, the power symbol over the person's head whose energy might be problematic for me, and then just dropping it over them so that their energy is contained and it is no longer affecting me. So if, if other things didn't work, then I can try that. Another one is send them Reiki. You know, do any of you feel like people um, are sometimes energy vampires? Okay, I've heard that term a lot, people that suck your energy. All right, well, they want energy. When you have Reiki, you are a channel for the Reiki. The Reiki flows through you, and you're connected to an unlimited supply. So these people want Reiki energy. Instead of giving them your energy, give them Reiki. Because as you give Reiki, you get Reiki. So it doesn't drain you. So you just flow that energy through you and to that person, and then they get filled up. That's very helpful. Another technique I like is to imagine them connected to heaven and earth and you connected to heaven and earth. When people are seemingly sucking your energy, it's connecting from your third chakra to their third chakra. And that is never good. We don't want to draw energy from each other. We want to draw energy from heaven and earth, okay, from source and ground. So when we do that, um, it helps both of us. And then baths. How many of you like baths? Yeah? Okay. Epsom salt baths are an impasse best friend. And I found a cool technique. I'm not really a bath person, but guess what? You can do Epsom salt in the shower. 
All right, all you do, I know, you look puzzled. All right, <laughs> all right, I grab a handful of Epsom salt, I wet it down, and it now becomes a scrub on my body. So now I have a scrub and I've Epsom salted down. And even better if you add some essential oils to your Epsom salt. Um, things like sage um, is really transforming. Lavender is a very powerful oil as well as frankincense. You can put that in your bath water. You can put a drop in your handful of Epsom salt and that can help to clear your energy too. Um, let's see if there's any other ideas. Grounding, power symbol. Hmm. All right, smudging yourself. So you can, yes, thank you. You can smudge yourself with um, incense or sage and that is also very cleansing and purifying. Oh, and Reiki has a, um, a dry bathing technique called Kinyoku, which is for use after a Reiki session, but you can use it anytime to clear your energy. And it is simply right hand on the left shoulder, brush, left hand on the right shoulder, brush, right hand on the left, brush, left arm out, palm up, brush down, brush right, brush left and you set the intention that you are releasing and cleansing your energy. So I do that every day before I get into bed. If I have a difficult counseling session, then I brush off after the client leaves, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> In Reiki, we do this um, at the end of the session, usually when the person is face down, so they're also not really noticing that we're doing it. We're brushing it off and intending to clear our energy, and that's a good time to ground again. All right, clearing and blessing your space. Um, the energy in your room and your work is very important. With Reiki, just like tonight, we, clear, we charged up the room by drawing the power symbol on the four walls, the ceiling, and the floor. You can do that in your home. Um, you can add in incense or uh, sage when you do it to make it even more powerful you can add in sound you can chant the name of the power symbol um, as you were doing this to add in some vibrational healing and then that increases the vibration of your space and makes it feel really good so if you've walked into a place and your energy felt uh you know that that energy isn't so great but if you walk and you feel like ah you know, that, that's good energy. And we can all feel that whether we're really conscious of it or not. So for an empath, it's especially important to clear your space so that you're not sitting in a pool of muck. Um, and keeping in mind that what you watch on TV also puts the energy into your space. Mm -hmm. So be mindful of that and wherever you've got your TV, um, then you want to do extra space clearing. I don't know about you all, but when I watched the presidential debates, um, mm -hmm. I didn't feel so good. And I had a pile of crystals in front of them, and the crystals, you know, definitely needed clearing after that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so we want to, you know, whether the news, the news is normally the bad news. Uh, so you want additional clearing for your home, and particularly your bedroom. You know, you got to be so mindful of your bedroom, and many people have TVs in their bedroom. Well, whatever you're watching on TV is putting the vibration of that energy in there, and then you're sleeping in it. So, um, it's important to clear the energy there if you want to sleep well and uh, not have dreams of uh, sleeping in a dorm. That happened to me one time. I, my daughter had watched TV um, in a townhouse that we rented on vacation um, all afternoon while I was away at the beach. She didn't want to go to the beach, go figure. <laughs> all right. And I came back and I felt the energy in the room and it was all staticky and uh, I spent 15 minutes clearing it but still didn't get it all. That night I dreamt I was sleeping in a dorm with all these people. <laughs> yeah, I know, funny. So. Something I noticed Yes, yeah, so Sarah was saying she noticed that I covered my TV. Yes, I have a cover on it in my teaching space because I really only use that TV for showing my uh, History of Reiki video. Um, 
All right. Um, if you feel like you have picked up spirit attachments in Reiki Master, you learn an exercise for healing spirit attachments. Um, oh, giving yourself Reiki is very important to balance your energy, to balance your chakras. You want to make sure that you're doing that every day. The more that you're balanced, the less likely it is you're going to pick things up. Because if your energy is flowing freely and evenly around your body, it's less likely to get stuck. So that is oftentimes what is happening with impasse. The energy gets stuck and then it becomes painful and uncomfortable rather than flowing through us. So you want to um, make sure that you are reikied up and have good self-care. All right, let's see. Moving meditation. All right, well, I think that's pretty much it. The rest of it are some of uh, my student experiences that I have in the article. So does anybody have any questions? Well, since I'm new to Reiki, what do you mean exactly when you say being Reiki to yourself and giving Reiki up? Ah, okay. In Reiki, you receive a special um, ceremony that connects you with the source of Reiki, which is God, you know, whatever you think of as your spiritual source. Mm -hmm. um, in Holy Fire Reiki, we call it a placement. It takes whatever healing energy that you already have and makes it stronger. So then we place our hands together and we give ourselves Reiki by placing our hands on our body. So, for example, on the eyes, the ears, the top of the head, the back of the head, the throat, the shoulders, the chest, the solar plexus, pelvic bowl, knees, feet, and then the top, middle, and back of the body. Now, it's a little harder to treat your own back, but with distance Reiki, um, we have a symbol for that, and I teach how to give yourself Reiki on your back in Reiki 2 class. Okay, any other questions? All right, I think I'm going to finish this. Check my website out at karenharrison.net and email me for more information, karen at karenharrison.net.